All right, guys, I figured I would kind of do a little short demo on sort of the next steps with uh, the fire hydrant. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to Travis. Uh, he was asking for a little help, um, and his model is, has come along. Um, it's nice and clean, so I figured I would use this as a, as a demo um, for setting up the UVs and baking some normal maps. Um, so right now, if I look at our UV, I'm in UV editing mode up here. Um, we've kind of got a, a mess of stuff, but I think we can kind of clean this up. Um, looking at the geometry, there's some things that we could make some changes on. Um, so what we can do is to make this a little more uh, low poly-esque is where these bevels are. Do a control backspace or control delete. Um, that'll that deletes the vertices and the edges. And all I'm doing is wanting to take away some of the the fencing uh, that's in place here. Some of these extra fencing edges, because it being a low poly, we really aren't going to need them. So a lot of times with this vertical stuff especially. Um, so that all comes into there, that goes into there, and then of course we have a lot of stuff down here that we're not gonna, not gonna need. So control backspace on that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm actually gonna turn my symmetry on. So that's object X, and so you'll see that if I select something on one side, it's gonna select something on the other, or should. facing no X is this way so the edge it's actually selecting interesting let's go with the world let's see so I'm looking at okay this is the axis X axis so it should be world X so that should be function on either side. Okay, well maybe it's not going to cooperate. Anyway, moving moving right along. So go ahead and select these loops here and here. That control delete. So just moving through all those nice edges, all these nice bevels or fences that, that come in and, and help hold this geometry together. Um, just trying to get rid of it. Good. So what should happen now is if I hit three to smooth it, yeah, it turns into this mushy mess. So let me just double check a couple more edges. So if this is no bevel, that means over here we look, then we are going to have curves down in here. So if we go to face mode a minute, All right? And what I can do is double click on these edges. Go to my modeling toolkit and just do a little bevel. Fraction 0.1. Let's do a 0 0.05.
tightens that up. This edge, this edge, bevel it. There. that is giving me let's go ahead and take this I'll do it for all of these bolts like that go ahead and hit bevel um, point one segments two Oh yeah, that crisp that'll crisp that up. The same on this guy here. Now alternatively, I could also do something like this, hit extrude and then just scale that down just a little bit like that. And that will also give me that nice form. Okay, so... So far so good. Looking pretty decent. Back to this guy. So, looking at the object, I can already tell if I turn... Um, this off we can see that there's some shading errors right from from soft and hard edge around around these uh, these cylinders we we'll want to fix that um, but we'll fix that kind of in, in, in the end so what I'm gonna do is gonna go to uh, UV editing and this will pull up this wonderful multicolor display go to my UV toolkit kind of make a little space here and it looks like there's been automatic mapping or something has already kind of been applied to this. Oh, before I forget, this stuff down here. Let's go to Vertex and select this. And then if I hold down Control and right click, it'll bring up this pie menu. And I can go to two faces, and I'll go to two faces. And that's going to select all these faces right here. Hold down Shift, and I think it's the greater than key. And that'll let me scale the selection. There's other ways you can do it, but I just found this is a very easy way of um, selecting all these bottom faces. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those because this is a fire hydrant. It's going to be sitting in the dirt. Um, you're not going to need a bottom to it. I can go and do the same thing over here. So let's go into regular mode. Go to vertex. Click here. Hold down control. Right click. Faces. Two faces. And then shift. Uh, greater than so less than greater than less than greater than and I'll just scale it up let's say to here hit delete uh, and that should clean that up all right so back to this guy um, if it's automatically kind of laid out like this what we can do is go ahead and do a where are you now stack shells arrange and layout there you are, the little layout button. I'm going to click on this. And that gives me an outline of all my parts and pieces along like this. So I can kind of see, uh, right now I can definitely see my texture border edges and some of the issues that I have going on here. Um, what I'll want to do is I can clean this up a little bit more. So let's actually come in here with these edges. that. 
I'm making a big mess, but sometimes you have to make a mess to clean things up right. Alright, there's also the other tool that they were talking about. The videos, UV, 3D cut and sew tool. I believe, yes. If I hold down the control key and click on these edges with this tool active, so if you notice my cursor is a little bit different. This thing's active. You can see 3D cut and sew so is, is visible here. And if I cut, click, or double click, it's going to cut an edge. If I hold down control and double click, it's going to sew those edges together. It just saves you, um, it can save you the habit or, or the, the time it takes to go over to this menu all, all the time. Uh, try over here. It's a single click. All right. Whoop. Easy. All right. So this is. Oh yeah. All right. So this. this yeah. Holding down the control and single clicking, going around here, just kind of sewing these parts and pieces together. I really could reduce these polygons too. Um, and I also know that it has two. We'll, we'll solve this in a bit. This has two sides where it's clearly chopped down the middle. Um, we'll probably want to lay this out so that it is just one um, roll or label, as it were. So I'll attach that. And we'll do the same here. Control click, control click, control click, control click. That set line of symmetry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. So move. There we go. So I got rid of that one there. And then because I don't want to hide these seams, I'm going to double click on that like that. And that'll make that cut. So on this guy here, it doesn't have one, so I'll just double click here, and it'll add one. This one's already um, down at the bottom. And then, yes, these, these end caps, go ahead and cut that off. Cut that. In this case, I'm not worrying too much about fewer shells or more shells. Um, I'm just trying to get the pieces done. So this, let's go ahead and do a control click on that, and then a click on that, and then a control click on that. So that will create a wrap for that side. Control click there, click there. So you can see that these are all kind of different sections. Yep. Anything that I miss, I'll find. I'll find it here in a moment. Uh, so we'll take that needs to come back together. That needs to come back together. Divider there. That actually doesn't need to be there. So far, so good. Um, 
probably cut this as well. Yep. I'm not going to worry too much about that inside. It's got it'll have so little information that you'll you won't ever really see it. Oh, missed one. So I hit Q, and when I hit Q, that's going to drop the tool. Should drop the tool. Yeah. So I can double click here and then double click here. Command delete. Get rid of those that edge loop there. And then I'm going to go back to my tool. And I can select that like that. And now my nice UV is now messed up again, so I'll hit layout. Okay, let's hit Q, go back into object mode. And then hit layout. That think about things. And yeah, I could definitely have, have a bit of a mess here. So we're gonna go ahead and edit, delete all by type history, because if I check on my channel box, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So I'm going to go ahead and edit, delete all by type history. This will speed things up a little bit. Just do it this way. Go to UV shell, select everything, and then we're going to unfold it. That's going to give me all these sections. And then I can hit layout. Object mode, layout. That's going to rearrange everything like this. Okay. So far, so good, so all right. You can see how it's all the cylinder pieces have been laid out into, into strips, basically. Um, and one of the things I can do, have all these shells, I'm gonna do is change this seam here, or change this seam here so that's on the back side. So, face, edge, go ahead and close that, close that, this, shift double click, so that, shift double click, nope, oh, just you that and then hit this shell and unfold it and it'll line, line itself up now one of the things I can do with this is transform and we can rotate this thing around like so and one of the things you can kind of do too is straighten UVs and that will clean some of these edges up this is interesting. What are these? Why are they overlapping? Oh, it's all part of that shell up, up top. So we definitely don't want that. So what I want to do is go back to this edge. Go ahead and sew that. Or, no, cut that. piece. Take that off. So now we have this shell here, this shell here, which if we unfold and then unfold, straight new V's will work on that. This, I'm going to unfold and that'll give me kind of this like high looking thing. Um, we can also take these edges here like that and sew them together and then unfold it again and then we'll have just this nice circular sort of piece here. So what I'm going to do is to keep, because this is a hard surface model Go back and if I straighten these UVs, what you'll see that didn't work out. Let's unfold it again. 
kind of get it close, straighten you these. So this is another little technique is if you noticed let me undo this. So this was this is that ring piece, right? And it is set so that it's at kind of an angle. If I try to straighten it, it flattens everything out, which is not what we want. We want it unfolded. But what I can do is you can use the unfold along, which will take it across either this way or this way. And so that didn't have it have the effect I'm wanting. So I'm going to switch to the other direction and unfold it. And you'll see that it'll kind of lay it out a little more straight. So let's undo it. Go to V and unfold. And you'll see that this stays pretty well, pretty flat. And then we have that wave across the top, which is mirroring the wave that's along the side here. So this, go ahead and straighten UVs. This one actually looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and straighten UVs that way. And then fold along. Yeah, that'll work. Straighten, straighten, straighten everything. Yeah, everything's kind of that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So if you noticed, so this is regular. Okay. And I still have a little bit of overlap. Something's not quite unfolded. If I do an unfold on this, it's going to move it so that it's kind of cattywonkered across the, the axis so it's a little odd, odd, odd angle. If I unfold along the U, it's still staying that way. If you unfold along the V, it's going to kind of line things up a little bit better. So what I want to do is actually straighten these so that it's still flat. I'm going to use along the V and unfold. I'm sorry, use the, the U. And that keeps it straightly aligned on the top and bottom and then has just aligned the, and has just unfolded the UVs um, across their the, the other axis. Okay. And last but not least, let's take these two here. Go ahead and cut that. That's fine. That's fine. Fold. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Got that. Got my got my disc going on here. Go ahead and straighten those UVs there. And so we have the ring. Is that is that a seam? Yep. Here, go ahead and sew that. And edge. Sew that. Go ahead and cut this, which takes the top off here, and unfold that, and that's going to make another little ring, so ring, ring, and then that actually may straighten this out, yep, so straighten UVs, unfold along, Then we have something that looks a lot better, a lot, lot nicer um, that way. Even select those edges, straighten it, and that's going to straighten those borders. So some optional stuff here that I've that I've done, um, but you can see how I'll have all the parts and pieces and everything's kind of nicely uh, nicely arranged. So from here what I want to do is go ahead and hit the layout button well object mode 
then the layout button and that's going to pack everything together like this um, might be able to cheat and I might be able to add some more uh, I, I could definitely optimize this but I think uh, at this point what I think I'm going to do is just kind of clean what's this little thing it's going to kind of arrange things a little bit give myself a little bit more padding uh, which is a term for a little more space between the UV shells so that if I'm uh, if my texture is going to create a, a if the pixels if the objects are too close together I can have a situation where if the overlap or the pixels uh, would blur into it and you can get some some errors that way so all I'm going to do is kind of create a little bit of extra space between these shells um, just kind of another little practice all right let me slide this up that this piece here I'm actually going to rotate that way move it here and I can give these guys just a little bit more breathing room So yeah, right, right. You usually want to get these things packed as tight as you can, but each one does need, you know, it needs some sort of breathing room between the two. Okay, so that's all this. So now let's go to our model. And before we bake it, I want to go to mesh tools and, no, I'm sorry, mesh display, do soft and hardened edge click on the little option box and what it's going to show me is I can do a thing called texture borders and hit apply close and what that just did was if I click off the object you'll see that it's very smooth on all these sides except for where I have my creases and I and uh, borders so for this case you can see because this is where that seam is along the back you'll see that you can see that you can tell there's a line there okay um, where this crease is or this where this edge is you can see that there's a there's a line there okay same thing with with these these things here so let me check okay so this actually is a donut and we need to cut that Fold, straighten your V's. Yep. Move it back out of the way, and then one thing I want to do with that edge too is go to mesh display and harden that edge. All right, so that's square. That's that's got a good piece. That one looks all right. I believe we're do good. I believe we're done on this. So object mode, edit, delete all by type history again. Um, I'm going to double check this with the with our checker pattern. Everything looks pretty consistent. Um, we can look on this distortion here. And you see there's a little bit of a distortion around uh, the, at the bottom of that, this piece here. Which, because it's a circle, you're going to end up with some of this distortion. Something that you can do to kind of fix this is, 
let's turn that off. Is I can go and try optimize. Um, and that can kind of fix things a little bit. But overall, it's, I think because this is because of the way that is just shaped, um, it's just going to be kind of what it is uh, at the moment. Let's try to unfold it again. Yeah, I think that's as good as she's. Cause that's that's as, about as good as it's going to get. So. Distortion, but that should be okay. That should be okay. Up with this guy. Let's resume this. Let's unfold. Okay, now you're looking good. And if I straighten, yeah. So let's try. looks good so I'm going to call that done so now we want to bake this thing so without substance painter uh, we'll have to use a different sort of option in order to, to, to get this thing get some normal maps so I'm going to take this change this back to modeling standard and if we look at my channel box here what we'll see is this is at zero zero like it should be. This one on the other hand is off by has been translated uh, almost seven um, units. So what I'm going to do is take this, do a mesh. We will smooth it. Give it four divisions. Let's have a nice high poly here. Set that to zero, and when you know it perfectly overlaps, okay? And what we can do is Maya does have uh, its own baker. It is under the rendering uh, mode. So what we have to do is change this to rendering right here. And then we can go to this menu called lighting and shading. And we have this thing where we can do transfer maps. Okay, that's the option is transfer maps. And under transfer maps, you'll see a dialog here. And what I want to do is make some, uh, make some settings. So we have our high poly, which is going to be our source. So I'm going to add selected, okay. That's going to be your source is your high poly. And then we have our low poly. And add that to the target. So the information is coming from here and it's going to go to here. Uh, search envelope, we'll leave it at zero for the moment. We want a normal map. And I can tell it where I want to save it. And so I'll change this to normal. Fire hydrant normal file format mat, JPEG. Uh, I'll probably let's change this to a PNG. Tangent space is what we want. Include materials, common settings is just fine. Uh, this may be checked. Connect to output maps. We don't want to do an, a new shade or anything, so just disable that. 
and then you'll have your common common settings and common settings is going to give you is going to be like what you had in substance painter where you have your um, map size and then your sampling quality so I'm gonna go with low for the moment filter size uh, filter type that's fine all this stuff should be should be pretty standard just to give me a first pass um, and then what I want to do is go ahead and say bake all right it's all done let's see what we got so here's our image and you can see it's got the nice purple blue that we're used to seeing with uh, with normal maps and what we want to do is test it and see how things work and then uh, let's make a make a higher quality version of this so I'm going to take my model the low poly do a command D duplicate it on over assign a new material to it let's go with a blend bump mapping file and use type tangent space normal bump value little box image name and I want to assign the image that I had just baked and it won't show up quite yet but if I hit six now it will and with this we can kind of test see what our edges and what everything looks like so looks like we've got some kind of weird tangent issues let's turn this off for a minute back on For the most part everything looks pretty clean be sort of interesting to see we'll, we'll see what this looks like a little later on now that looks kind of ugly um, but we'll have to see how this we'll see what this look this ends up looking like so there's a little option I want to show y'all under this transfer maps you can change this thing to envelope and you'll see that it has this pink looking uh, shape that's been applied so we have mesh envelope and both and if I look at envelope this is going to give me my search distance and if we use this we can drag it out and you'll see that it's basically exploding the the model so what I want to do is where this kind of gray area is I want to see if I can make that a little more make it as small as possible to prevent errors so what you're going to want to do is you can take this and you can do the envelope and you can use that search envelope and then so in this case I'm trying to find a setting that's going to encompass the entire pretty much the entire model so let's look at 1.8 yeah without without it getting too out, out of hand that looks like that's covering everything um, and then what I want to do is take this number here and there's this thing that says search method closest to envelope and I want to add that number down here and then change that back to zero and then bake now one of the cool things that you can do is if you click on this model over here you'll see that it's got you have your bump mapping and you have this file that comes up you can hit this reload button so after I bake it's gonna replace the image because I haven't changed the name so I can just click back on the model click on the file hit reload and it will update what my uh, what my settings are and so in this case this seems like this works out pretty well I'll look at the image again I'll see that most all this stuff looks pretty nice and clean we have our waves we have some nice transitions I'm not seeing many uh, many errors with it um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the high settings 
So let's change this to, let's do a 2K texture. So 2048 by 2048. And we'll do uh, 4X sampling. Uh, filter size 1.4. And let's see what we can get. If I go ahead and hit bake. All right, so let's check and see what the update looks like. Reload. Boop. Pretty clean. And if we look at the image, now we can see that we have all our nice details all baked in there. So now I have a normal map. And I can take this guy, edit delete all by type history, file, let's just export selection. And so save it as an FBX. So <clears throat> inside of Maya, I'm sorry, inside of Unity, we can bring in the model, create a material for it, and assign our normal map. And you can see it looks not too bad. So let's change our color. Let's give it a have a nice red. It's painted, so it's not going to be metallic. You can make it shiny and new, or a little more worn. And we can actually go in. Could go into Photoshop or whatever else and, and edit that texture and add add some other other things to it as well. But there you go. That's that's would be the, the complete game model for the fire hydrant. So we have our low poly with normal map that we can then apply materials to inside of uh, inside Unity.